This is an example of building using people as the main power source on the building site. Um, it's often a really fun way to build in a way that a lot of these have been done, especially with the earth and masonry. Um, you're going to need a shovel to dig dirt out of the ground and move it around. Round nose and flat nose. A square shovel is good for moving sand and loose dirt. A number two shovel is good for digging holes. Uh, and Ernie's good at sharpening shovels, but you can probably find somebody local. A sharp shovel. <laughs> uh, tarps are really, really handy, not only for staging materials and being able to kind of clean up afterwards, um, especially if you're using the lawn as overflow space. Uh, and for making cob, tarps allow you to roll and then squash and then roll and then squash the material. Um, stomping cob on tarps by foot is still one of the most efficient ways to do it. You just get a better quality material faster than you do if you're trying to use something like a cement mixer. Uh, brick sets and hammers so that you can trim bricks around corners, cut angles, all of those happy dandy things. Uncle, uh, Uncle Jerry's brick chopping technique is an inspiration. Yes. Uh, you're gonna want buckets. You're gonna want more buckets. Um, you're typically and then you're gonna, gonna want more buckets. You're typically gonna be using a five gallon plastic bucket that you can pick up. A lot of times you can pick them up recycled from food service or that kind of stuff. You probably are gonna want at least one or two wheelbarrows on site. Um, you can occasionally get away with a dolly or just dragging things on tarps, but a wheelbarrow is real handy. There's a lot of things to haul, and I would say on any work site you're going to need at least three wheelbarrows. One for sand, one for clay, one for, for finished cob. If you haven't moved masonry before, start small. Uh, start with two to four bricks at a time. Start with a quarter of a wheelbarrow at a time and add more. It's easy to add more. It's very hard to keep people working after the first two have thrown their backs out. Uh, there's a, there's a whole set of masonry tools. There's there's the square brick trowel. There's the um, there's a cement float which has a ragged edge on one end that you can use to make a rough surface on the plaster. There and then there's a steel floats and wood floats for finishing where you're going for certain textures. A wet steel float is really good for a final smooth finish. I have I have a tendency to grab glass bottles and smooth down cob with them. Uh, Don't use a glass bottle you like. We tend to mark the outline. In the wall. Outside of, like, basically you want to be able to get the tape off after you're done. Um, so we'll tend to mark the outline with the inside edge of the tape being the, the line that we're working to. If you are working with a group of people who are relatively inexperienced helpers, it helps to mark out the level that you're going for that day on the wall. Mm. rather than the finish level because if you are if you're doing rubble and, and cob infill and you've marked out the finish level you'll end up with rocks that stick out proud of the finish level so if you need a half inch or two inches for your next finish material mark the level you're working to today not the level that you're working to as your ultimate finish when you put when you put straw in cob or in plaster you you wind up with pieces that are standing proud so a butane torch, propane torch. Your basic tools should be available and you want your second best or third best tools on site because mud is really hard on fine tools. Yeah, um, hammer nails, a bucket of rusty nails that are sort of straight is often really nice if you're working a bench that you're, or, or any cob project that you're going to be maybe mounting wood to so you can you know, make dead men to, to mount in the cob so you've got something to nail into. Uh, a dead man is a board with a lot of odd stuff sticking out of it that can be worked into the masonry material while it's wet. When the masonry material is dry and set, then you can screw into that um, and use normal framing technique from there. Usually on a job, I carry a Makita uh, circular saw and I have a masonry blade, a metal blade, and a ripping blade for, for wood. Um, the masonry blades, I don't like using grit blades. I like using diamond blades. They give me a cleaner cut. To me, they're safer. 
and I'm not spitting sparks all over the room. And, you, and even with the small amount of brick you cut for a job like this, you're going to go through probably two or three grit blades? Yeah. So if you're doing any kind of uh, tile work or um, visible finish details where you're going to want to be cutting multiple pieces of masonry, um, you're, you're going to get your money's worth out of the diamond blade. Right. If it's just two bricks, you might get away with just a chisel or, some, or a brick set or something like that. A metal cutting blade for a circular saw, if you have to trim a barrel or something like that. Um, for DIY people, I kind of usually try to steer them towards using snips for cutting metal. But every so often you'll get something where you just need to make a cut quick, get it over with, and go on from there. Um, metal cutting blades, metal cutting blades are a little scary for anybody who's used them for for any length of time. A good cross cutter ripping blade with with good carbide teeth on it, you know, cutting pieces of wood to length. Um, Really handy to have on a job site, usually relatively safe. A level is important. A decent building square. Tape measures. We often use Sharpies or sometimes building chalk, just something to mark with. Carpenter's pencils are always great and they, you know, don't get gummed up by the grit the way a Sharpie will. Um, you don't have to do the whole thing by hand. Uh, if you are looking at a larger project and you have access to power equipment, yeah, you can you can mix cob with a with a bobcat or a bulldozer or a pickup truck with a plow blade on the front. Um, any number of things. It's it's usually called tractor cob. You don't put straw in that cob. What you what you do when you're mixing it that way is you mix the clay and sand together and then you take small batches and, and mix in straw because if you try to mix in the straw with the equipment it's going to chop the straw up and you want long strands of straw in your cob not short strands. An inexperienced tractor operator, somebody who just rented one for four hours from Home Depot, is probably not going to be able to mix it faster than people can by foot. Yeah. Uh, so it's just something to look at in terms of your skills and preference as you're building your stuff. I personally think that the pizza party is the better <laughs> power equipment. But. That's all the tools you need. <laughs>